Hey guys, welcome back to Film Feature 43. Today, I'm going to talk about the Ewoks movie, Battle for Endor. So, if you haven't seen my Caravan of Courage uh, review slash breakdown, uh, go ahead and click up in the iCard and watch that. But, we're going to talk about the second Ewok film that's kind of away from canon. So, let's get into it. So, the first thing that I noticed is, even though these are made-for-TV movies... They are not listed in the Disney Plus Star Wars movie category. You have to go back to the vintage Star Wars to be able to find these on Disney Plus. Also, I noticed in the beginning credits that this was a story by George Lucas. So, even on the side kind of made-for-TV stuff, George Lucas had a hand in the storyboarding at least of these films. So we start out the film, it's this beautiful day on Endor, the dad is fixing up the ship, they're getting ready to leave, Sindel's taught Wicket how to speak English, and his mouth actually moves now when he talks, so a lot less terrifying than the original film right off the bat, and I noticed that the dad was replaced by the principal from The Breakfast Club, which is a pretty big get if this was released after The Breakfast Club. I'm not exactly sure. I think they were both released in 1985. Um, but if so, that's pretty big star power to pull into this kind of mediocre sequel. The Ewoks in this film somehow look a thousand percent less terrifying than they did in Caravan of Courage. They are, like I said before, their mouths actually move. And they're speaking English, at least Wicket is, to the fact that Burl Ives isn't about anymore. He's not the narrator. Uh, we get broken English from Wicked, so we don't need that narrator to tell us what the Ewoks are thinking because, spoiler alert, Wicked is one of the only Ewoks that is in this film. So it's not really an Ewok film as much as it is a Wicked and Sindel film. And why is it a Wicked and Sindel film and not the rest of the family and the Ewoks? Well, Sindel and Wicked get back to the village and it's being ransacked by these marauders that look like Tusken Raiders mixed with reject uh, extras from Halloween Town, mixed with Planet of the Ape costumes that were in a studio fire. Uh, not the best makeup effects, but these bad guys are ransacking the village looking for something in particular, and one of them smashes this little girl in her anthropomorphic teddy bear in the face with the butt of a gun and they go rolling down a hill. They find Mace and the mother, and Mace is protecting the mother from these marauders, but like most things that Mace tries to do, he screws up, and they both get offed. Um, Mace is dead, the mother's dead, so Sindel runs back to the father, and he tells her that she has to go off by her own because he's not going to make it, and he gets killed. So what happens to the dad? Uh, he gets roughed up by this woman who looks like the love child between Cher and Lynn Collins from uh, John Carter. And the Marauders are searching their star cruiser for what the king keeps calling the power. So Sindel makes her break for it, but she's stopped by the elderly Xenon warrior princess who has a Wonder Twins ring that allows her to turn into a crow. And because they're the smallest characters as they're being carted away Sindel and Wicket make their escape and that's how it ends up becoming the Sindel and Wicket show they're chased by these guards who they ultimately kill by throwing them into a green screen ravine and they're trapped in this cave because of the rock slide that they caused killing the guards uh, Wicket's making a glider which we've seen Ewoks use in the original trilogy and in Caravan of Courage he goes to pull in this bone and this giant claymation dinosaur comes out and attacks them which he tries to fight off to no avail because he's a walking talking teddy bear and it grabs Sindel and hoists her off into the painting that's used as a brat backdrop for this film. Wicked finally catches up to him with a hang glider he's making for their escape and he forces the dragon to drop Sindel essentially to her death. Um, but he saves her at the last second. They're sleeping and they're almost pickpocketed by a 
speedster that looks like a Muppet, and they are led to Santa Claus's house by this rat, and they plan on staying there forever. That's going to be their new home because whoever lived there obviously left, except for the fact that they were given the chance to escape so they could go back and save the rest of the Ewoks. They completely forget that. They're staying here because this is going to be their forever home. Santa Claus comes back, kicks them out, and tells them that he doesn't want any strangers in his house, which seems to be the sensible thing to do. But we're supposed to take it as he's this mean old man for not wanting strangers in his house. And we see that the Ewoks have been imprisoned in the castle from Army of Darkness. I was going to make a joke about how the Santa Claus-looking character um, named Noah really looked like Wilford Brimley until I looked it up. To see who his actor really was. And it ended up being Wilford Brimley. So there's another big get for this uh, this movie. Who apparently blew their budget on the casting. And the makeup for the not so good uh, Marauder makeup. And the moving mouth of the Ewoks. So that seems to be where most of their budget went in this film. Even after they follow him to a special place that no one else is allowed to go and he strictly tells them not to go there. They follow him, and Wicket gets trapped, but he still lets them stay because deep down he's a nice guy. Old Lady Sif then eavesdrops on them as a crow, and hears a song that Sindel says her mother used to sing to her, and then uses that song to lure Sindel in to where she could grab her because her and the Muppet King think that the seven-year-old knows how the power to the Star Cruiser works for some reason. Obviously, Sindel doesn't know why or how it works. Um, so, Xenon stripped of a ring because uh, the king is sick of her not producing results. And they're both thrown into these uh, dungeon cells with all the other Ewoks. Wicket, Santa Claus, and the Speed Rat then break into the castle to save Sindel and the other Ewoks. And Harry Allen makes the guards fight each other and kill each other that are guarding the cells. They even shoot off their blasters, which nobody in the castle seems to realize. Even after Sindel announces that they're there and yells their names and saying, You're here to save me, no one's still alerted. And Xenon Arthritis Princess doesn't try to get anybody's attention. Um, she tries to get the Ewoks to let her out as well, but Sindel says no, she's evil, and so they leave her there to rot. The Ewoks are now free, and finally, somebody else in the castle hears all the commotion. They sound the alarms, and everybody comes running. The Ewoks are holding off the bad guys. Santa Claus blows a hole in the side of the castle, and they start rappelling uh, to safety. And a couple of the Ewoks home alone, a few of the guards that are coming down across... And get eaten in the moat that has monsters in it. Coral Efficent is then given back her power ring, and the evil army's out to kill themselves some Ewoks. The Ewoks are to hold off the evil army until uh, Noah can get his sleigh cruiser off the ground with a power cell that he stole from the king's palace. He's having trouble getting it off the ground because. There's just no Christmas spirit anymore. He finally gets it started at the very last second, and Wicked gets captured and saved, and then Sindel gets captured and saved. How Sindel gets saved is Father Christmas has to fight the main general from Planet of the Apes with a cane, where the general has a sword, and they're going back and forth fighting. Uh, it's kind of funny to see uh, Wilford Brimley I don't know what age he would have been, but being older, fighting back this guy with a cane who, where he's swinging around a sword, but you get that little action sequence in there. When all hope is lost, and it looks like the Ape King is going to kill Santa Claus, Wicket uses this magic pebble to Medusa him into a stone statue, and you see Cheryl Crow up in the trees, not being any help to the bad guys whatsoever. She doesn't join the fight in any way. Uh, she's just pretty much there to fly away to live another day. And happy ending, no Ewoks die, probably because Mace wasn't there. His screw-ups 
didn't put any of the Ewoks in harm's danger. So everybody lives, and Sindel flies off with Santa Claus to go back to the North Pole. And they leave everybody, including Wicket and Speedy Gonzales, back on Endor, which is kind of weird because... Santa Claus lived with that weird Muppet thing for years, so you think he'd be a little bit more attached. But they leave them all there back on Endor and fly off uh, to have more adventures, which I don't believe we ever get to see. So, as far as my review for this goes, it wasn't a great film, but I think it was leagues better than the original. Um, nothing against the original with as regards to cast and makeup and stuff like that but this film seemed more cohesive it seemed like it had generally better acting the little girl who played Sindel wasn't the greatest but she was like six seven at the time I don't know what you really expect she's not Drew Barrymore which in doing research I learned that Drew Barrymore was actually offered the role as Sindel for the first movie so that was kind of interesting um I think I made a joke about her looking like Drew Barrymore in my first video. Again, it tied for a primetime Emmy for special effects. A space-age fantasy daily variety praised for its superb special effects, clashes of near epic proportions, and imagination run rampant. So, again, participation trophy. Um, there was an Ewok cartoon on primetime TV back in the 80s, so... It, pretty much led to that. I think it did fairly well for the time it came out. I couldn't find any information on budget or when uh, what it made, considering it was a TV show. Um, probably made whatever it is that TV shows of that time made enough to warrant them to put out a cartoon. Um, like I said, better than the uh, Caravan of Courage. Still not my favorite Star Wars film. I don't think it's really anybody's. But I think it might be worth a watch if you're really into Star Wars. So that's all I got for this video. Um, if you like this content, go ahead, like I said before, watch some more of my videos. And leave a like down below, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.